It is 2.03 and time to call the meeting to order. Uh, Judge Gilbert, would you come forward and say our invocation for us, please, sir, and then we'll do the pledges. Thank you. Dear and Father, we want to thank you this day for the wonderful day that you've given us. The clouds that we have before us today, may you use those to provide rain and provide the water in which this city needs. We ask that you look over this council today as they make the decisions that are going to be ruling upon this city. We know it's a hard decision for them to make for these people that are here with us today that have worked hard and that continue to work for the benefit of the city. We want to thank you for all the many wonderful blessings that you've given us. We ask that you guide, guard, and direct each of us in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Judge. I got a call about one o'clock from Daniel and he is having some family issues and he will not be with us today. He asked for me to make his apologies. He wanted to be, but instead we have Daniel. So everything y'all had ready, I mean, we have Michael. So everything y'all had ready and lined up, prepared for, for Daniel, Michael gets today. So anyway, this is the work session agenda. See, all matters listed under the worst section agenda are presented for discussion and future planning purposes only. No administrative or regulatory action will be taken by the council. Public comment will not be accepted during the work session agenda. And if council desires that to be changed where we do want public opinion, we will take public comment on this. So what we have now is discussion and considerations related to the fiscal year 213-214 budget and this will be taken care of by Morgan Craigwidden, Craigwidden, Chedwid, Chagwidden. This Morgan and Michael will take care of that. Just, just Morgan, just Morgan, Morgan, yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as you recall, we've we've got a some decisions to make. Uh, we hope to uh, place money where council's priority is, so that we can. Uh, address as many of those issues as possible and uh, uh, ideally we would get through all of the goals or all of the money usually we we run out of money before we run out of goals but uh, today uh, but we'll certainly be happy to make as much progress as we can uh, with that Morgan would you start us off please sure certainly interrupt me any um, any questions or, or items you want to pause on um, a lot of this is information uh, we've, we've gone over in separate meetings, so uh, I may clip along at a pace that you would like to pause, and certainly please just stop me. Um, of course, we always start, start with the calendar because that is ever-present in our mind through the truth and taxation deadlines. Um, here we are August 27th uh, with our special workshop. Uh, September 3rd is second reading and approval of the budget ordinance, so that'll be at our next uh, regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, it'll also be introduction of the tax levy ordinance, and um, and on September 17th, we'll finally adopt that tax levy ordinance uh, to be put into effect for the fiscal year beginning October 1st. Morgan, before we move too, too much farther, can I get the guys in the back to turn your microphone up, please? I'm having oh, trouble sorry. hearing you. Okay, so we've gone over the top or common priorities from council members. Uh, recall that we've had um, individual meetings, we've had group meetings, and uh, we're hearing a lot of the same items over and over. Uh, as Michael stated, uh, the, the goals uh, that we, we hope to fund, um, and then we'll match the money to it uh, as we're able. So uh, there are a couple slides here reminding us of, of the goals that, that staff set forth uh, preparing this budget by uh, utilizing City Council's direction. Uh, the first item there is street construction and maintenance. Um, recall that we're estimating about $8 million annually. That's probably a low figure. It could be 8 to $11 million annually to get that on a, um, a seven-year rotation, which would be appropriate for 
for our city um, after we get through those first few years of funding it at that level it will decrease but because of the state that our streets are in we would need eight to eleven million dollars uh, added to the budget uh, to, to meet that need the next item there is to talk about stormwater fee and projects and a, a, an analysis of how that fee is levied what the eligible uses are um, in the current CIP that, that's a currently adopted, uh, over $55 million worth of projects that um, that need funding attached to them. Uh, they're, they're quantity projects that are, that are not eligible for that uh, stormwater fee. So these are items that speak to uh, stormwater volume and runoff uh, to the tune of $55 million, the total of all projects there. Uh, we've heard again and again to keep the uh, property tax rate flat uh, in, 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 in looking at the big goals that we have and the funding sources that, um, that don't quite match up to these goals. Um, we've been indicated to keep that property tax rate flat. Um, if we were to lower that by one cent, um, the current rate of 78.1 cents, the value of one cent would be a loss of revenue of $370,000 and change. Uh, continuing along with the um, priorities we're getting from the council members, uh, watering in public spaces uh, due to new parks being brought online and water rates going up, there is a need there. Uh, departments have um, indicated that they would need $310,000 uh, added to this year's budget to appropriately water open spaces. And uh, These public spaces include um, parks, uh, Texas Bank Sports Complex, Fairmount Cemetery, and so um, that's what we would ask, um, what divisions have asked to be added to the budget uh, for this year. And the last item there, uh, some variation of wages. We heard from, from, from multiple people, um, whether it is uh, retaining current employees or recruiting future employees or um, addressing the ranges, I any variety of that, something to do with wages. Um, I've, I've thrown some figures on the screen here. Um, this is th with, with an asterisk, with the caveat that um, when I say 3% equals $647,000, um, that's just for the general fund, uh, excluding police meet and confer. Um, that does include benefits. It um, does not change the pay ranges. It only addresses uh, positions currently occupied and uh, giving some variation of 3%. And of course, that could be a 2%. It could be based on merit evaluations and, and split up however. But uh, to have a dollar figure to start working with. Um, we, in general, we, we prepare this kind of number so that council has an idea what kind of varying raise target uh, what that what the fiscal impact is of that as we get into more specifics about uh, the impact of varying raises based on merit uh, and uh, we've talked about stratifying raises in other words people at lower levels get targeted for higher raises and targeting jobs where that we have high vacancy rates we'll, we'll need to get Lisa to help us with that what we've done is prepare this so you have an idea what these what the fiscal impact is of these varying levels so that wraps it up for priorities from council members those are the the, the top five or so items that we're hearing again and again um, another item of note as we talk about um, adopting this budget are the target increase requests these are items that the division managers and directors have submitted that they need added to their budget uh, to continue um, current operations uh, to continue offering the services that are tasked to them uh, the original list of submissions in exceeded $7.5 million. Uh, the budget committee prioritized this list down to $2.7 million, and uh, we met with departments to full it further drill, drill down this list down to $1.2 million, and that list is oh, it was emailed out to y'all um, a couple weeks ago, uh, and I have it here if we want to pull it up or hard copy. We reviewed the draft budget um, in individual meetings. Um, we have the proposed bef budget before you today, which um, included a few items, um, like, for example, meet and confer, contract negotiations, uh, fire department, um, um, building debt service, and um, one other item. If, if you'll excuse me, I'm sorry, this is an old presentation, and I have the, the new one queued up. Let me that was sent to you in your background packet. <laughs> so
So uh, as the items I just spoke to, that these items were included in the proposed budget, the meet and confer contract at a cost of $465,000, the fire training center debt service uh, to match that local grant for $200,000, uh, contractually obligated uh, target increase requests. These are items that divisions ask to be added to their budget, but we have a contract in place and we must uh, fund them. So that's $2,500 almost uh, for the increase to the water lily. Um, contract and then the remainder available in contingency is one million three hundred eight thousand uh, dollars recall that as we discussed last meeting that um, this is the amount of money left over or available uh, for use it is certainly subject to City Council's pleasure whether it be used for raises uh, priorities as we've discussed uh, target increases or any other items so to, to kind of give a, a graphic of what that looks like is we started this budget process um, in our individual meetings talking about uh, revenue excess of $1,976,000. Uh, when you subtract out the cost for meet and confer and subtract out the cost for the fire debt service and the contractually obligated target increase, uh, those three items there, that leaves w contingency of $1,308,000 and uh, that's the marginal revenue, the amount that's available uh, for other items. Morgan, let me ask you. Uh, I know it's a small amount, but I don't, I don't understand the 2,445 contractually obligated. What Can you, I don't good, remember good, that. Good question. I, that is the contract that we have with Kim Landon. If you recall, a few years ago, we moved him from an employee to contracting services. So he provides all the work of the water lilies and maintains all that, and the city contracts with him to provide that. Oh, okay. So he's not an actual employee. He's contracted Just later. Contract. Okay. And with that, we have... Before we go too much further, can you go back to that last slide? I think the key to take away from this slide is that in the general fund, as we discuss council priorities, there is currently available $1.3 million to address what the, the cost of those priorities. And that's that's in the general fund, and that's something to keep in mind as we have our discussions. May I? The contractually obligated target increase I was on council when that was, did I hear you correctly that that has to do with the water lily project, the person that's contracted? Correct, and that contract has a increase amount per year. Just out of curiosity, what is the 2445, how does it represent in percentage? I don't know. I'd have to ask Carl if he might, we'd have to look at what his current, con two and a half. Okay. I knew Carl would know. He's. <laughs> Thank you. And with that, we have the, the individual line items that are in your uh, financial summaries available to go over uh, in more detail. Um, we'll start with general fund revenue, the, um, the primary. Morgan, before we get too far into this, Mayor, a lot of this material we've already covered more than once, and we'd be glad to go through it again. The question is, how would you like to proceed? What's the council say? I've seen it enough myself. I think, yeah, I think we could speed up a little bit. Some of this, yeah, it's coming back, so. Give us, a, give us an abbreviated. Okay. Uh, property tax is up, as discussed. Sales tax is up about 7%. License and permits is down slightly. We had a question on that, and we're ready to, to speak to the methodology used to arrive at that number, if, if it's the council's pleasure. Charges for service are up over $500,000. That's largely due to the ambulance fee of $610,000 being increased. Uh, municipal court volume is down, so revenue is down substantially. Uh, transfers in are down um, $65,000 from the landfill fund, which yields the total general fund revenues increased $1,988,000. Then that gets us on into expenditures. Uh, the only changes really of note here are either due to attrition, due to staff turnover, or due to uh, reorganizations. So it's also important to note, of course, that the fiscal year 13 current budget uh, is a budget that's been amended many times. Um, and so you'll see, for example, municipal court, uh, current budget of 2.8 million almost, 
proposed budget of 2.16 million. Uh, that's a reduction of 630,000. That's entirely due to the carryover budget amendment. And so when we set targets, we base it on original budget. Uh, so those restricted items and those one-time projects are not included. And that gets us into uh, human resources and finance. Again, uh, just some attrition there, not, not any uh, big items to report, any big changes there. Development Corporation and Development Services. This is uh, due to a rework, some changes there due to um, splitting that director out into two separate functions. Uh, neighborhood and Family Services, uh, again, a rework with the Stormwater Division about how to enforce those codes. Um, health Services, uh, a rework due to <coughs> the grants um, changing. Uh, police department uh, expenditure, uh, the $15 million budget includes carryovers, but then we added um, meet and confer of 465000 So when you look at police, their increase was only 58000 That's the net of those two items changing. Fire and ambulance, you'll see that increase of 587000 That's largely due to the um, debt service for the um, building and for billing uh, fees associated with that higher ambulance volume. Operations and parks and recreation, not many changes there. And other, that 1.5 million the, uh, in the non-departmental that increase, the majority of that is the 1,308,000 uh, of contingency. With that's currently budgeted in non-departmental and available uh, for use. So it's not been allocated to any division or any service or any program. It's simply available for city council's uh, direction. As council directs, we'll spread that money out where, where council authorizes so it in the budget. So what is the difference between the 1 million, 1.3 and that 1.5 is two, you know, 200,000, what, what is that? It's largely in non-departmental, it includes the contracts with outside entities like the appraisal district, which um, I think is actually staying flat, but um, also the tax rebate agreements, I believe, went up. And so those are items where uh, we have multi-year contracts, and so those are, are funded in the fiscal year 14 at the level they were contracted at. Could you please back up one or two? Uh, there, you were talking about the million some odd thousand dollars that need to be allocated, and I'm not sure which the, the uh, budgets you gave us are not numbered, so I don't uh, know which page you were on. The total general fund revenues increased 1988000 and then when you compare that to the small changes in expenditure, the revenue over expenditure was the $1,976,000. Okay. Itemized here. All right. The meet and confer dollar amount, how does yes, that equate out to a percentage increase? Um, it's a different percentage for depending on the level. Um, Give me the low and the high. Lisa, did you say average of four? Average of four percent. Well, we're in there. I'm, not, I'm sure you said it. I just didn't hear it. The uh, fire compression rate, where is that taken care of in there? Good question. That is not included there. It is still an option with a 1.3 million. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. How much was the uh, the columbarium to, to do the columbarium and get that started? What was the low end, the lowest we could go to get that started? $316,000, Rodney. Three sixteen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. What were we looking at in fire compression to bring that up? 244. What are we looking at? Yeah, as again? far as money. Or what does it cost? 200 and something thousand. To bring up them in, in their compression yeah. issues? Yeah, yeah according to the plan. 240. Two, 244. They told me 244. I'm confused. Uh, I remember the 244 readily, but I either read or someone made the statement that there was only one fireman that that affected and that's not so no there's a it's a, and brian could explain it but there's a whole pack 
package of that as far as where the compression goes. So uh, like Morgan said earlier, you know, the, the dollars they figured in, in in this budget are just dollars to help because you can address the compression yet never give anyone, you know, a, a raise in regard to that. But the 244 basically if will fix the problem at hand. And Brian, if you have more to add to that, come come do so. But surely that would be more than one employee that it would Oh, yes, it fix. is. It's right, it, that's it, what it, I'm it, having it a problem in, with. It hits in certain ranges more so than others, and that is true. And Brian can explain that further as well. I'm actually going to explain it. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, the um, uh, the 244,000 was the number that came out of the new fire rate uh, rates that they were charging for ambulances, and the new pay scale that Brian had proposed to to change the way the salaries are done in fire was going to cost 244. It's not a compression issue. It's for them to change their entire structure without having steps to where they're paid a longevity or loyalty pay and so forth. That that whole scenario. Yes, it will it will solve it will keep compression from ever becoming an issue. Is that what it does? But I was the one that did say there was one employee presently at fire okay. that that would have suffered had they promoted, but they haven't promoted. So thank you. You're welcome. The uh, whoa whoa whoa. Lisa. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought Brian was getting up next. Do you know what percentage that works out to be in the fire pay increase? No, that would definitely be a Brian question because he okay. worked up the scale. Then I'll let him answer it. I, I'm not sure what percentage that works out to be because there's multiple ranks in there that get no pay raise whatsoever. Um, because basically it's affecting the lower end on almost all of that money. So. And, and you did mention that we could do that over two years? You could um, um, stagger it out because nearly all of it is in the bottom part. You could phase it in if you chose to do so. Um, and I think that could be easily done if, if that's the direction you all want to go. We could, we could split that and, and make it work. Brian, do you have an idea what that first year cost would be? Well, you could just basically half it. The, Four thousand dollars of that is rank Southern firefighter. The about two hundred forty thousand of that is all firefighter, the lowest rank. Okay. Well, Morgan, just for the sake of making this thing work, why don't we plug in one hundred and twenty-five thousand as on this sheet that uh, shows us how it works, and it also uh, moves us in that direction. That would move you halfway there. Michael? Yes, sir. Uh, since the city council was not involved in the line item construction of this budget, I would, I would like to talk about uh, uh, some po possible cuts before we start spending all our money. And if we have more cuts, we have more money to spend. I think we're open to hear what council would advise. Well, I also uh, would like to talk about um, not being in the budget workshops that we've always done before. You know, uh, Mayor Lon had put us in a, a line item budget and we were able to look at, and I think more effectively cut or increase where it was uh, necessary. And now we're back, we're given summaries, summaries. And it's not as easy to see what those items are. And I, there are some things that I would like to discuss, for instance, uh, one of the position classifications we have is called a volunteer and visitor service, service coordinator. And I thought all of that was volunteer. I didn't know we had a budget dollar for that, that salaried position. It has always been a volunteered position before, so I'm <coughs> questioning what some of these are. Sure. Let's, let's, if, can we talk about what sheet you're looking at? at Lisa's, uh, is I'm that looking at the right. financial pay plan, uh, the classifications. In the 125, it lists the job position as being grade 15, volunteer and visitor center coordinator. And I, I thought those were volunteers. It, it was a few years ago. That's one of the staff, Lisa, can it, it's good afternoon. Good afternoon. That's one of mine. That's Corey Robinson of our staff. He is the Visitor and Volunteer Services Coordinator. 
Um, it's a long title, but it takes on a broad variety of duties, including running our visitor desk. He coordinates the gift shop, volunteers, living history, baseball, and he also makes okay, a pretty you darn good uniform. Okay, you just cleared uniform. it up. But visitor center to me is the visitor center where the chamber is. And we would like you to think of ours, too. Okay. <laughs> Thank I mean, you. That's Fort Concha. Thank you. Were you thinking the chamber, Charlotte? Is mm -hmm. it? Oh. That's the visitor center. Right. Can we get back into my cuts? Yes. And I urge everybody else to uh, come forward with their own cuts too. Uh, certainly, uh, there ought to be plenty of things in here that can be cut. And uh, uh, I hope everybody's got their own things that they see that uh, are not essential items that can be cut. And let me just pass down my list so everybody can look at it. Winky, while they're doing that, can I ask one quick question about something before? Sure, go ahead. Morgan, even on the budget that you have there, even for uh, for us, for City Council, 121000 or something, is some of that, does some of that roll over from the previous uh, year, or do we spend it all, or what is it spent on? W what, what happens there? If you, have, if you have open purchase orders, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll carry that across uh, into the new year so that when that bill comes due, that the remainder of that money is available and not charged against the wrong year you know and I'm talking about that, that 121 so. if you're asking what hundred and twenty one thousand dollars buy buys you right. the majority of the City Council budget is um, for the annual audit that is conducted on on city financials and um, the remainder for meals uh, employee appreciation luncheon um, travel that that's that's the majority of what's in that budget. Okay. And I didn't okay. know whether there was an ending balance or you know it just happens to be the same amount that it was last year. So I didn't know what. That's how we set targets. Absent of salary changes, uh, everybody's budget is exactly the same it was in prior years, uh, plus or minus any salary changes and target increase requests. So since there are no salary changes to the city council budget it, there are no changes uh, okay. proposed and, in and that there budget. were no carryovers into this year's budget that's what i want okay thank you okay Mr. Ward, I'll go through your okay Ward, i'll go through your deductions okay uh hopefully this will expedite the process and what i've handed you is sort of a discussion draft of what we've been looking at here and of course it's uh it's it's at the end of uh, uh our draft budget uh, where it says invite you to build your own scenario uh, I want to I want to go through some of these fast and uh, see if we can cut these out and have more items in for more money to spend or uh, leave for contingencies. Uh, item number one: workers' comp incentive, two hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars. That's never appeared in any recent budgets before. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this was the brainchild of one former city council member who lost the election is no longer with us. Uh, so I uh, don't think it carries as much weight, but even more importantly than that, uh, most people in the insurance business will tell you that workers' comp incentives are not the best way to go about uh, getting your loss ratio down. Uh, it has to do with management from the uh, 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 department in, uh, handling that. Uh, uh, making sure that the supervisors and, and the, the work uh, crew supervisors, department heads uh, require all of their employees to follow all the mandated and set out safety rules. And uh, I, I think uh, I, I just don't like the idea of, of coming up with this incentive because I think it's a waste of taxpayer money. Uh, as I said, it was one person's brainchild and uh, uh, I don't think, uh, I think he was wrong. So, any discussions of that before I move on? I'll just run through all these. Uh, next is cell phone increase, uh, $63,000. Uh, all of these numbers that I have in, in items one through four are increases in over the 2013 budget. They're not, uh, they're not, and so when you take these items out, if we do, uh, that means that the budget will be left where it was in the prior year. 
Uh, so you got cell phone increase is $63,000. The Visitors Bureau increase $100,000. Uh, I think that, that looks to me like that was something that uh, might have come up with the, the prior council who was involved in these budget proceedings and uh, uh, that was one of their priorities. Uh, I would call everybody's attention that we just uh, uh, gave a generous contribution uh, to the visitor center, I believe, uh, on their uh, their rotten uh, beams and, and, and provided them money. Uh, I don't think we need to do this. Uh, uh, we give the Chamber of Commerce plenty of money as it is, and, uh, uh, you know, this, this money could come from the Chamber of Commerce uh, if they need an increase, or it also could come out of the Coast of D.C. budget. Uh, and uh, then last item number four is $63,000 art council increase. That sounds to me like some members of the prior council uh, talked somebody into putting that in the budget. Uh, that's about a 100% increase from what their budget was in 2012. Then moving on down, uh, meet and confer. I plugged that in. Fire debt service number two. Number three, firefighters. We just got through talking about uh, which I thought was a compression issue, but it's an increase uh, that we found out a minute ago was actually 240,000, but I rounded these off to some extent. Uh, then employees' salaries, $400,000. That's down from 600,000 uh, that was plugged into the budget by the employees themselves uh, and the staff. Uh, $400,000 increase over last year. Uh, that would end, that would be on the basis of a 2% across the board increase rather than three percent increase uh, I will make several points along the lines here uh, two years ago the employees got an across the board 3.5 uh, percent increase based on the information that we were provided and last year a 1.25 percent increase from the same information so that's a, a nearly five percent increase over the last two years uh, I think a 3% increase is much higher from what, than what I've seen around the state. Uh, most of the towns that I've seen are given a 1% to a 1.5% increase, and I've, I've seen just a few that have given 2% increase, but not anything higher than that. So uh, I'm recommending that we save $200,000 there. Uh, and then 5 uh, was in the prior itemization that we just talked about. Item number six is a possible 1% tax rate decrease, $370,000. Uh, Ms. Farmer tells me, and I knew this was to some extent was the case, uh, the uh, city's been on a program trying to obtain a 1% rate decrease for a number of years, and Ms. Farmer can probably elaborate on that in a minute, but um, uh, I, I would point out several things. Number one, uh, because of the oil boom, we've had a lot of, of reappraisals. Uh, it's about $40 million uh, of reappraisals of property. And, uh, you know, a person sitting out there in their residence uh, is not getting any more benefit out of their property uh, as a result of the oil boom and the reappraisal of their property. So uh, this would give these folks a, uh, uh, a break uh, from their reappraisals to some extent, not 100%, of course. Uh, and another thing I would like to mention is uh, that our tax rates here in the city of San Angelo have been in the top two or three in the state for the last 20 some odd years. Uh, we're way higher than everybody else. The, the typical uh, uh, tax rate in the state of Texas runs from about 44 to 48 cents per hundred and we're at 78 cents so that's more than 50 percent higher than most of the other towns in the uh, state. Uh, it was kind of funny, I was out there at the appraisal district the other day talking to somebody trying to do some homework on this, and a guy had moved here from Fort Stockton a few years ago, and he said, well, I really like living in San Angelo, but he said our tax rates here are brutal, and uh, he was at the appraisal district. So uh, that's what I'm proposing there. And then, then last, uh, is the uh, Fairmount Columbaria for $316,000. Uh, and uh, if you'll note above, we got $446,000 uh, in possible cuts that could be made. And then also I, uh, the $200,000 that I just mentioned on employees' salaries is a decrease. 
which would be a total of six hundred and uh, uh, forty-six thousand dollars. And I know other some other people have other cuts, but anyway, that's just uh, my uh, thoughts on this matter. And I, I do have one question uh, in the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. Uh, it looks like there's a, an increase in the budget of $835,000 in professional services from last year, and I, I believe you need to elaborate on that for the, purp for the benefit of the council. Yes, sir. I can certainly let Mr. Kelton come up and speak to the detail of that, but um, last year we uh, levied uh, additional landfill fees to be implemented. Do you want me to let Shane answer, please? We are expecting another fee increase that uh, we did go into last year to account for the additional monies. Those monies have been put into professional services as we were looking and preparing, not knowing council's direction as we move forward into the end of the contract, original contract with Republic Services. We have some uh, expenses that were expected going into the end of the contract, <coughs> and that's what these uh, funds were put in there for, mostly for the uh, construction of a new sale and a new sale is running one to 1.2 million okay so professional services d does not mean to to the council that, that that's not salaries or anything no sir like that's that. con that's contracted out services for the construction of the new sale okay Shane thank you mm -hmm. Lisa you want to talk to this workers comp incentive or someone absolutely um, the workers comp does fall under the human resources and risk department um, in 2007 it may have been 2008 that was the last year that we paid a safety incentive bonus to our employees um, we have uh, since 2008 uh, the safety coordinator position has been created to try to um, get better at our numbers on workers comp and we've seen uh, a dramatic increase or a dramatic increase uh, improvement in the numbers um, we have a safety committee and they have met with a representative from every department in the city and they asked if they could entertain another safety incentive program to the employees they revamped it they've made it a little bit different um, the workers comp fund did have uh, they didn't ask for an addition to their target they cut out some of their other things in order to create that and um, that's where where it came from well you know it is debatable whether or not these programs are effective and I don't think it's a necessarily a, a question that has to be decided today uh, uh, there, there has there were departments where that program in the past has been effective and there are departments that seemed uh, relatively ineffected by unaffected by those incentives and so I think it is a mixed bag I think we would be open to uh, a discussion about what is effective and what is in the public's best interest and um, uh, well I think she just made my argument a minute ago that uh, they revamped the uh, the department and they, they've got more supervision over the program and and that's worked and uh, that's that's my experience and that's what my experts tell me is the most effective thing to do not giving out more more money and so anyway I I, I want to make a decision on that today but uh, we'll see what everybody else wants to do thank you let's talk about this visitors bureau increase um yeah vis well visitors bureaus what was it's the it's the it's center mayor huh? shall i shall i talk yes. about it yeah, okay mayor uh, as we lead into this I'd, I'd like to talk about the sheet itself that was handed out first of all it's spreadsheet style document i love it it, it hits right home with me and i think we should talk about these items but some of these items are not going to have an impact directly on the general fund and so from that perspective for example this item the visitor center or visitors bureau increase we do have a contract with the convention and visitors bureau uh, for an amount of money for which they provide services 
um, we went from a, a methodology where the ordinance called for an allocation based on percentages to a contract for a firm amount. Um, that new budget amount is probably higher than the old budget amount, and I, that's probably what Mr. Wardlaw, is that what you saw when you spotted this 100000 This is totally increased from last year. Yes, sir. And so we can certainly discuss that contract and the merits of what they provide versus what it costs. However, a change in that won't make a difference in the general fund because that comes out of occupancy taxes. And so uh, good discussion that we ought to have. Um, however, it does not affect the general fund. And so uh, the chamber uh, or the CVB and chamber representatives who, we, who uh, helped us uh, execute that contract uh, invited more participation and feedback from council uh, in the uh, operation uh, associated with that contract and I think they'd love to meet with council and see what council's priorities are. Uh, I think it's a good discussion to have here with council and uh, the allocation the actual dollars they will receive will be less than they received last year because they were getting a percentage of a fast growing uh, pie and now they're going to get the same amount whether that pie doubles in size or only grows a small amount. Michael, I'm not disputing uh, what you just said uh, about the effect of this, but I, I, why, why is it included in the draft budget that you furnished us? That's, it's where, that's where this, fun, this information came cert from. Certainly. The, the budget includes multiple funds. There is the general fund where taxes uh, and activities not required to be accounted for in separate funds exists. Uh, for example, there is uh, the civic events fund where we account for occupancy tax activity and activity associated with operation of city venues. And so those different funds, we have uh, some of that isolates that, that financial activity into those funds. So it is a uh, I'm certainly not suggesting that it's not a valid it's certainly a valid topic the question is does it have an impact on the general fund and and it does not have an impact on the general fund because it exists in that other fund would so that be the same thing for the Arts Council is that hotel it is funds as well but as we look down that sheet for example a workers comp question that exists in the in in a self-insurance fund so that's not general fund either uh, the cell phone increases um, I would imagine that uh, that Mr. Wardlaw saw, saw increases in the detail that that he saw and uh, and would like to roll that back that to the extent that he pulled detail from across multiple funds that could have an impact on the general fund I do have good news in the in the expenditure section though he has a uh, fair amount uh, columbaria listed for three hundred and sixteen thousand we have that that certainly can come from those general fund re normal revenues and expenditures that that certainly can happen we do have a portion of the general fund expenditures set aside for capital expenditures. And so uh, while some of these funding sources at the top of the sheet don't necessarily create general fund capacity, number seven at the bot on the bottom half of the sheet, uh, that Fairmount Columbaria could be funded from that general fund capital money that is a portion of the general fund budget. Recall that there is 1.75 million in the general fund that we've set aside for cash pay for capital. Uh, we've talked about dedicating a quarter of a million that uh, each year for fire trucks. That leaves approximately 1.5 million that has not been dedicated in one fashion or another. And that Fairmount Columbaria project, that phase one of that project could come from those dollars. And so uh, while there are items in the top half that won't have that positive general fund impact, there's certainly an item at the bottom that could, could utilize a, a funding source that doesn't rely on those top, the top half of the page. So nice it, work. Is the capital uh, uh, fund, is that on the agenda for discussion today? It is absolutely available for discussion today. Okay. Uh, and we can make as much or as little progress on that as you'd like. Well, I, I, I think I think we need to discuss each fund at the separate separate time, not all together, and cross discuss them. That that is a challenge. 
Morgan, how many funds would you say there are? Uh, in excess of two dozen. This is hard to read, and I apologize. But the, the key is the general fund is where the taxes exist. It's where the tightest financial situations exist, and it's where the bulk of our decisions lie. And so the general fund is uh, typically where the bulk of the time is spent. And so uh, with that in mind, uh, when we have restricted time with council, we tend to focus on the general fund unless we have significant issues in other funds that need to be addressed. Is there any, any other comments from council on this? John? Well, it's safe, is it safe to, like you're saying, is it safe to say that if, if we leave this $100,000 alone for the visitor, I mean, it doesn't impact the general fund anyway. Is that correct? I mean, you're talking about it comes from hot monies. You're correct. It does not affect the general fund. But if it is a valid topic for council, it can be discussed today or another day as you decide. Whether, it, whether or not it has an impact on the general fund, it's still, if it's a, if it's a priority for council, it can, it can come back. We can schedule some meetings with CVB representatives so we can go through exactly what that contract uh, is to provide and uh, count what council's expectations are. We built in there a, a plan for quarterly meetings with CVB representatives and council representatives so that we could have that closer communication about, the, uh, about that function. So I think they, they have said before that they welcome that interaction and are, are, are ready to uh, attempt to address council's priorities. Michael, uh, uh, remind me why they refunded us that $300,000. What, what happened? Good, there? good point. Re recall that I talked about the, uh, in the prior arrangement, the ordinance which controlled the disbursement of occupancy taxes was based on percentages. So as our occupancy taxes rose dramatically, we saw a spike in those collections, we were distributing all of those in accordance with those ratios or those percentages in that ordinance. So they collected approximately, or we distributed to them approximately a million dollars in the last full fiscal year, I think is what that was, when their own budget was closer to seven hundred or eight hundred thousand dollars. So as those occupancy tax collections were growing, we were distributing in accordance with the ordinance. And that is somewhat what led the previous council to say we want a tighter grip on that. We want better accountability for that. We don't just want to send those out. Uh, and so they told us contract for, for a certain amount, not for an allocation. And so the contract calls for excess occupancy taxes to be returned to the city mm -hmm. when the contract year is complete. Well, they had accumulated uh, uh, an excess amount and they returned that to us in accordance with that contract. And that was approximately $331,000. Your microphone. microphone. Excuse me. Uh, uh, in moving on in, in, in dealing with the general budget, I would propose in finishing up my uh, presentation, I, I'd, li I'd like to open it up to employee salaries because that's the sort of the last, <coughs> next, about the next to last item uh, that's on, on, on my list here and, and may be one of the most important or the one that may take the longest. So I would open it up for that. And, uh, uh, I've talked about decreasing the salaries from 3% to 2% across the board, and uh, I'd like to hear what everybody else says. I think other people have got other ideas. I've got ideas on it, but I'll wait and let everybody else talk first. So who wants to go first? Mm -hmm. uh, take off, Don. Um, like I said at the last meeting, I kind of wanted to, to hit the bottom and bring those up some. Um, my my way my method to the madness i guess is is looking at anything that was less than than forty thousand dollars and perhaps giving them uh, a bit more uh, than what winky had proposed on the two percent but if we can can take that from the top and transfer it to the bottom i have have no problem with that i also uh, have talked to lisa about uh, uh, some of the ones that that really stuck out to me and and uh, uh, part of those are are uh, the non-certified 
uh, I mean, the non-civil service peace officers, the certified peace officers that aren't civil service, which there's not that much uh, discrepancy there uh, in bringing those up. Lisa, do you know how much that would take? Um, actually, uh, the judge created that spreadsheet, and I don't have a copy of it, but I think he's here, and I can oh. take a look. Okay. And then while, while he's up here, I was also looking at the, at the clerks. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to work in municipal court before I received this good-paying position. So uh, I know what those clerks go through, uh, and it's a it's pretty, pretty tough job sometimes. So. Okay, thank you. Um, on the clerks, when we were talking about the clerks, when the judge and I were talking about the uh, deputy court clerks and the deputy court clerk senior, there's been legislation that's been passed that is going to require them to keep up with a little over 90 more laws than what they presently do. And the more we discuss these positions, the more we realize that it's not so much that the pay range for those positions needs to be upgraded, but that the positions themselves need to be upgraded. They are in grade 10s. The other grade 10s are OK. But I think what I'm finding is that the actual position of deputy court clerk and deputy clerk senior, court clerk seniors, are, are in need of being upgraded to a different grade. So in order to do that, uh, the cost to the city, including benefits, is almost $34,000 okay. for those positions. Um, as far as the marshals go, the um, uh, the cost that the um, judge has come up with on that is 17600 um, for changing those uh, city marsh the deputy city marshals to get them in line with the police officer roles okay. and rank now you also have to in the fire marshals position uh, but they probably aren't that far off so we could probably round that figure maybe to 20,000 say or something like that I think that probably be pretty accurate I didn't pull those since we keep them in a separate um, pay system <coughs> but okay. yes um, and then along with that I was also concerned with with the dispatchers mm -hmm. um, here here again my, my thinking on that is uh, w we have around a hundred thousand dollars in expenditure and overtime mm -hmm. what my, my thinking on that is if we if we get those up to a higher higher pay grade also Maybe we won't, we won't have the turnover. I know you and I talked about how long, once again, kind of like what the judge had as far as a problem in that uh, training them and then having them work 12-hour shifts several days in a row to, to make up for the, the people that aren't there. And then we also pull in occasionally uh, people, our, our police officers off the street and have them dispatch also my thinking on that was if we can take some of the monies that we're spending for overtime and put that into salaries get these people trained and maintained in that position I think that that we would still come out ahead because it would reduce the amount of overtime that we have in theory that sounds correct um, I think raising the salaries is, is is only part of the problem and I don't think it needs to be raised as much as you think um, we have plenty of applicants to become dispatchers the difficulty comes with how long it takes to place them um, the training is very intense and takes a long time and I think I think it's a combination of both I, I certainly think their salaries do need to be raised and again it would be a lot like with the court clerks positions where they should be upgraded um, because if you look at those listing of positions the emergency services dispatchers are in a grade 13 I think it is and there's other jobs in the grade 13 that don't necessarily need to be increased because they their responsibilities are not um, increasing so I would instead of changing all the 13s we would just elect to move those into a different grade yeah. I um, 
I don't have any idea what we'd be talking in terms of money. I could probably put something together pretty quickly and let you know how many um, people are in there and um, what that cost would be. But right off the top of my head, I would say you'd probably be looking at forty, forty to fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, once again, if we could figure out a way of doing that and reducing the overtime by fifty percent, it would pay for itself. Um, so you well, know, well, that's just keep in mind, if we raise the salaries, it's not going to make more of them come to work every day. It's not going to mean positions are filled right away. We're still going to have that training requirement, and we're still going to have vacancies. So the overtime is still going to be necessary until enough people can be brought through the system. Right. Right. Absolutely. I okay. Understand. Um, w one of the other things that. Uh, uh, Dwayne, I know, had mentioned before was a, a living wage, and that's why I was I was looking at the bottom end of of our pay range so much. Uh, I know, in in talking with Mr. Dixon uh, and Shane, they were talking about you know perhaps losing an entire crew, um, and I'm not silly enough to think that we can compete with the oil field, but by the same token. If we can can make a good wage for for these people to where we can get our projects completed, it's not going to do any good for us to have money for the projects and not have the manpower to do it. So, um, you know, that's that's why I took the philosophy that I did on it. Okay. Charlotte. <laughs> I was reading. Can, Startled can, me. Charlotte, may I just ask something to follow up with this? The nine one one dispatchers you talked yes. about the intensive training, how long is that and how many vacancies do we still have? How many do we have today? Um, I didn't pull today's vacancies, but I would imagine it's still sitting around five or six. Um, I haven't signed off on any new hires in the dispatcher area, so I'm, I don't think that number's changed since the last time we talked. Um, if the chief is here, he could probably tell you more extensively how long that training takes. You don't know. Okay. Well, I thought she called Because oh, okay. okay. however long that training took, it's still like having the, the positions are still vacant. So The training is about six months. We do it in stages. Uh, call taking is the first phase, uh, being, able, being sure that they can answer phone calls. There's so many that come in uh, to be able to enter that information. So they have to sit with somebody through that process. They sit with somebody through the entire process. And then we move them to uh, channel three or lighter channel or to fire. And they spend some time working the fire channel. And then they spend some time on the channel three area. And then they go to the primary channel. And so it does take some time. And there's evaluation processes throughout that whole process. Right now, the way the program's designed is if they can't do any of those jobs, if there's one job they cannot do, they don't stay employed with dispatch. How many vacancies do you have now? It's probably about six, but we probably have about six or seven that are in training, uh, which is almost, uh, that would put us with the vacancies, about half the staff, half of the staff at the, at the current time is in training. Okay, I uh, like what both of them said, don't have any huge issues uh, with it, it, with the exception of few, uh, previous councils. Um, that's tough to gauge when you come in, well, I don't care what previous council has said, well, you know, you don't know the fires that they had to fight and put out and go through to make the decisions that they made, so I do want to take into consideration, you know, some previous council, uh, for instance, the uh, uh, capital improvement plan, you know, that was not in our uh, charter and that, you know, good positive things have come about. The There are some things that I particularly would like to see us cut, uh, and I'll start off with car allowances. You know, as you give things, you got to give up a few things. And for eight years, ten years, the city has worked on increasing the low salaries that the city has been historic for and I ask you to provide a range you know where we were at that living wage to me and we have brought that up considerably from the 60 70 percenters that we had and that's giving something but you need to give up in the car allowances I just don't feel that 
that's a privilege. It's an amenity that is long gone. You know, bank officers don't even get cars anymore. They just don't. Uh, that is something that um, you earn. And if you're willing to do the paperwork and turn in a mileage report, I mean, you won't be gaining a lot of money, but it's a different perspective on how that money is spent. And I would like to see us this budget totally cut out car allowances as an automatic giving. And I'm going to get $650 a month plus my salary. And when you look at just salaries, that car allowance and that cost of the insurance and stuff is not in there to what they're actually earning. So that's an area that I really want to consider. And I had asked Michael last week, because I had looked in the last two years blue books and could not find what the nature center was costing the city to operate. And, uh, and the reason I asked that even further is the comment you know, was made, well, it's uh, income and expense is just really negligible to the budget. And I'm sure that it is, but when you look at the condition of the nature center inside and out, the high volume of traffic, uh, I just wonder if the same thing could be accomplished like we're handling the water education and stuff like that instead of operating an off-site separate location for the nature center and and there again not having any numbers in the budget to look at for the last it's just it says zero well you've got employees out there you've got overhead uh, you've got feed uh, or food uh, that you know has to be provided so i would like to definitely take a look at possibly reallocating where that process, that education process could and should be handled better than its standalone uh, item out there. And another item that has really bothered me, and, and Dwayne, I'm going to ask you to help me remember here, because I know about uh, six, seven years ago, we really hammered uh, city pretty hard on the pilot funds that we wanted to do away with that. That's payment in lieu of taxes. And I think Duane and Johnny and I really campaigned hard for that. And uh, council went along with it. And um, it was reported back to us that, you know, it took them, we gave them, I think, three years to get rid of that pilot fund. And it, we were very proud of them that they came back in something like a year and 10 months and told us that that had been done away with. I was very, very sad to read and look in here. All we did away with was the water pilot fund. There's still the sewer wastewater pilot fund and this pilot fund. And I'd like an explanation on that, why we didn't gradually get, try to eliminate all those when council had asked that it be done. Charlotte, That's a, excuse me. Uh, I think some people need an explanation of what the pilot fund is, including the, uh, including the Thank public. You. Good question both good questions first of all there's not a pilot fund there is a payment in lieu of tra uh, payment in lieu of taxes years ago uh, the city was making straight transfers from water and sewer funds into the general fund and uh, that was about the time that uh, privatization became an industry buzzword and during that time they started to characterize or consider what the imp impact, the financial impact would be if those operations were privatized and the new owners, those private owners, began paying taxes on those assets. Because that was the, st my understanding is this, this is in the early and mid 90s, I think. Uh, they began, uh, they recharacterized those transfers as payment in lieu of taxes and began to collect them from those funds based on the net value of the assets as if they were paying taxes. And uh, at some point, uh, that became an issue uh, at council. Council said, we're not, we're no longer in favor of that. And I believe that was when Harold was here. And council directed staff to discontinue that in the water fund. And so that's what we followed up with. And Harold and I had several conversations about other about the sewer fund and whether a payment in lieu of taxes uh, reduction or discontinuance should occur in the sewer fund. And he said we were directed to do it in the water fund. We're going to get it done in the water fund, and we will uh, worry about the sewer fund when it becomes an issue. And so there have been small decreases that we've we've tried to implement in the. Uh, 
uh, trans the transfer from the sewer fund but um, at that time we were given direction not to pursue the same kind of three-year plan in the sewer fund that we did in the water fund well, I don't so I don't remember that but so how much are excuse me how much are how much is being transferred five hundred thousand dollars how much five hundred thousand yeah. dollars from the sewer fund to the general fund well let me just explain one other Let's move on down the road and uh, well I'm not finished oh, you're not? Okay. But I, I would like for everyone to understand what the uh, pilot fund is and does, and I'm not as good at explaining as the rest of you maybe are. Um, well, the, the problem was uh, back when this was discovered, uh, the pilot uh, was not even known to the city council at the time it was discovered, yeah. and uh, where you had multiple funds involved in the pilot program, you could look and see from one year to another uh, they were moving funds around to, to avoid uh, increasing taxes on the citizens, pulling funds from sewer and the water, and you could see from year to year there, there was no consistency or rationale to it. He was just moving funds around from one place to another, uh, and uh, that's just not good management, and uh, the city council didn't know that it was going on, and uh, even Wiley Webb, our auditor, didn't know it was going on, and uh, uh, you know it's just not a good thing well that's you know I, I don't recall it being uh, just the water fund uh, to I, I don't recall giving instructions to only do it on the water fund it may be I'm, I'm just said I didn't recall that but it is something that is a, a real irritant to our citizens out there that you know the taxes that are there and the, how the money was being done so that's what we had requested that it be done it be done away with and I would like to request it at this time uh, forward I I really and truly the property tax it's not just because we made a commitment uh, to do this to, uh, over 10 years to get it down at least 10 cents and I realize we're a little ahead of the schedule on that but by the same token we are one of the highest in the state and our salary levels and incomes are not up there with the highest in the state and this year we're getting an extra five hundred and sixty four sixty seven thousand dollars in property taxes um, it there's always been a d increase in that amount that we've been receiving and it just seems that the mindset with the staff is we get more money let's spend more money and if you'll recall last year uh, Ms. Uh, district five and myself we didn't approve the budget because we didn't want that just to continue we're getting more money so let's spend more money you know, we have got to tighten our belts. We have, uh, the real situation, we're probably more than likely going to be forced, if the drought continues like it is, to start buying water. That we have to buy water from somewhere at a, a price that we're going to be forced to pay, and where are we going to get the money to buy water for our citizens? Money needs to be set aside now for that, that contingency. Uh, I hate to think where, where we're gonna be when that happens. But you know, by setting a goal and ste a steady pace to accomplish that goal, you realize that things in the city cannot be changed overnight or in one year or two years. And that's the reason I respect the efforts of some council members is to sticking with that goal to gradually do it so that you just don't rip things wide open. Uh, I. I have to mention the calls that I've been getting, um, they were confused, they thought we were the county as well, and they were you know, telling me that they work for a very good company here in San Angelo, very good pay raise, a scale, pay scale, but uh, 13 years or 15 years and 20 years with that company, in the last five years, they've not received a salary increase at all, not even cost of living. Uh, we have turned around and changed the low pay for the city. I, you know, I want to point out that in some of these ranges that I, that I looked at, I was kind of surprised. It, for instance, the fire recruiter, the fireman, excuse me, the probationary police officer. Always before in years past, that probationary police officer and that fire uh, probationary fighter has always been the same. 
and the same amount and I understood that but now the probationary police officer starts out starting salary at thirty six thousand eight hundred and fifty three dollars a year which to me that's that's a pretty good salary and the firefighter now gets thirty five thousand nine fifty four the firefighter has decreased down and I don't know how that happened uh, I would like an explanation of it but also when you look at a um, I'll just pick on the police deputy chiefs uh, you know they've got a range that uh, is from 90,000 to 96,000 plus a year and a car allowance that adds up well you know those are over with the car allowance is over a hundred thousand dollars a year and it's not a bad salary for San Angelo yes I, I think they should go up but I have to weigh that against the performance and where in looking at the municipal courts uh, reports is the decrease in tickets uh, overall things that uh, has taken and lowered our bottom line uh, explanations on that are, are definitely needed uh, it, to me anyway and then I am curious about things I see a title of director of water utilities water utilities assistant director a uh, water utilities engineering manager a water wastewater district collection superintendent, a water treatment superintendent, a water reclamation superintendent, a water quality superintendent. Okay, how many people do we have, employees we have in that department that aren't a superv supervisor or superintendent? And by the way, those salaries, you know, minimum 50085 a year, all the way up to 75128 a year. Would you like us to get somebody up to answer those questions? We sure. I'll answer the first one, um, which was the fire, uh, the probationary firefighter and the probationary police officer. And the, com the difference between those two ranks has everything to do with meet and confer, and that's it. Meet and confer, raise their ranges, and as we've had funding available outside of meet and confer to keep fire uh, close, that's as close as we could get with the funding that we had. So they, if you notice, they're very close. Um, Let's see, it, you said it's 35.9 for the firefighter probationary and 36.8. So, I mean, they are less than $1,000 apart. So that was the best that we could do with the funding that we had last year when we did the ranges. And um, I'm going to let Ricky let's, Dixon. Let's get Ricky to tell us yeah. what those different superintendents do. And Charlotte, we'd like to. We got, we got the Either one of them. Did you have a question mm -hmm. about police? Mm hmm. Let me hear your question again, please. Well, the, the question think, wait, was, the first was, one was, go ahead. As we've increased steadily, say, salaries for the police, but those car allowances have never changed. They're still locked in up there at those amounts, and that's, you multiply that out per month. If you get $650 a month, you'll have times the 12. That's on top of that salary. And we've not seen any give up or reduction in that. Uh, and I, I would like to see the car allowance is done away with okay. in this budget year. If I may, I'll address that first. Uh, our car allowances have been the same since since mm -hmm. we've take, taken office. I believe my assistants are three seventy five and mine's four fifty. Uh, mine is not six fifty. So uh, it says it is. It's not six fifty. I've never received six. That was the city manager's car allowance, but it was never my car allowance. Not the current city manager. Four, Lisa, four fifty or four seventy. Four seventy, four fifty, but it's four, not six fifty. Four twenty for the chief. 420 for assistance and then 450 for me somewhere around there is what it is 470. 470. 470 so I haven't had 650 I will say that for many years I have written memos and I have asked to give my car allowance back and take a take-home car because I have saved the city thousands of dollars thousands of dollars by having a car allowance I pay a increased insurance because it's a work vehicle I, uh, I've owned my vehicle now for a few, probably about three and a half years, and I have put 50,000 miles on that vehicle. But the majority of that vehicle, majority of the mileage is with the city. Now I will be more than happy to charge the city 55 cents per mile because I'll make bank doing that. And if that's what we prefer, that would be fine as well. Uh, that's why we haven't really changed it. It's been one of those things that, that I think when we took it before, Harold, Harold realized the cost savings for the city by giving us the car allowance and keeping it that way. And, and that's why it's been the way it's been. Chief, my reason for bringing it up is there was no discussion <coughs> from the councils on this as to what we would like to do, et cetera, and so forth. We're here at the budget time 
and I'd this is all my only opportunity to I'll, bring it up. I'd ask for an increase. Uh, and I've been asking for either a take-home car or an increase. Well, I, and what I'm comparing it to is, is there's just not any other jobs out there that I'm aware of that people get paid to drive back and forth to work. And that's what it amounts sure, to sure. is... Well, that's not, that's not, I can assure you that's not the only place I Well, don't. didn't have the opportunity to discuss it, verify it, and prove it out, but that's, that's why I bring it up. Okay. And, and if you'd like, I've, I've got notebooks. I keep my mileage. Uh, I've done that every year since I became chief. I've got my tax returns that I'd be more than happy to show you if you'd wanted to see that as well. And I probably have my memo saved in my documents on my desktop to show you the cost savings for the city because I've studied this every year and it's become a topic. And I've asked for an increase every year or a take-home car and it's always been denied. But I also did a comparison of, I didn't do it, I asked Ms. Marley to do it for me, uh, a comparison of our benchmark cities is to which cities give car allowances in which are doing are completely done away with them and almost every one of them on the list have done away with car allowances and they've had to do it because of tightening times people yeah. want more salaries people want more of their insurance sure. premium paid there's just all kinds of human re resource things that go into that sure. today did uh, did you also ask if if they were providing take-home vehicles for the yes administration? and yeah. i have the yeah. survey and that's yeah. what i've studied sure. and, and looked at uh, th i think the next thing you, s you mentioned you mentioned something about uh performance yes. measures mm -hmm. um I'm, I'm going to try to be as as uh politically correct as as i can oh and i know what you're going to say yeah the san angelo police department is not a revenue generating business and i don't tell my officers to write tickets i understand uh, that they go out and it's their discretion whether to write one or not to write one if the numbers are down then the numbers are down uh, TSP, I've said this for the last several years, asking for an increase in TSP. That is a generating, there's a lot of revenue that's generated in that program, and you saw today it was 209000 and it's been 209000 for many, many years. So as salaries have gone up uh, in that program, overtime hours have gone down. So we've seen a large, uh, a significant decrease because of that, I would say. Uh, secondly, I would, uh, uh, I don't think that, uh, that my performance uh, should be evaluated based off how many citations my guys write. I think my performance. I didn't say that. Okay. Well, you mentioned performance mm -hmm. evaluation and and the money not coming in. You know, I, our decrease in crime and what we do with the amount of people that we have and in the building you keep us in or we stay in. I think my, the men and women of the San Angeles Police Department have done an outstanding job and our performance is, is exceeds most of the state. Our clearance rate is one to, one of the best in the state as far as crimes and our crime rate deduction uh, reduction is probably the same what i'm trying to say when i say that talk about the performance and how it's down from previous years to give increases or to consider you've got to look at the overall whole picture mm -hmm. if if the income producing part of it is 47 percent less than it was before needs to be a conversation amongst the council though, so that they can understand why it is that much less and we're looking at doing increases new vehicles it's it's with anything you have to look at the overall picture and that's why i mentioned that absolutely and and the fact that you asked for uh, uh, benchmarks our benchmarks on take home and, and those type of things uh, i think one of the other questions would be is when you look at our benchmark cities what percentage of their general fund is put towards public safety in comparison to san angelo and i think you'll see san angelo is normally rated lower in the percentage of our general fund that we put towards public safety not just police public safety in general that being said uh, it makes us feel that the priorities uh, for certain cities uh, where their salaries are higher is because they put more focus on public safety and we do have a lot of projects and we do have a lot of things going on we're addressing the streets we're addressing the water issue but i don't believe we're addressing public safety chief and thank you and i i Re really respect the job that the police and the fire do uh, and I want them to be comparable to other places but without line item workshops that we have had in, in the past, uh, the, in the past mm -hmm. it is very hard to make these decisions <clears throat> if we've not been able the seven of us to sit down and discuss what makes this up and to hear hear from the supervisors and out there i will say that in, in regards to your citations that was an issue that came up a couple of years ago uh there's been a steady decrease over years but that was something that's occurred uh, in in 
cities across the state of Texas, uh, the Metroplex area had quite a significant decrease, millions of dollars lost in the general fund budget because of decreases in, in citations. It's either the new officers were hiring or not wanting to write citations. It could have been when we went through the recession, uh, they were more compassionate when it came to writing citations. I can't tell you why uh, that's occurred. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I just have one thing that I want to say, and then I'm through with my, my portion that I have looked at. I hope I hadn't forgot anything. But if you look in the job description for the city council, our job description is we set the budget. We pre prepare the budget. And I was unhappy last year, and I'm unhappy this year, that uh, the budget has been prepared and submitted by staff. You've looked at what you want to have in your, the toys in, under your Christmas tree, and this is what you want, and uh, given a summary to council. And to me, that's, that's poor decision making on the council's part if we're not going to look at the light item and let us make our recommendations <coughs> and not let staff be setting the budget and making the recommendations. That's council's job. Thank you. Ricky, did you want to answer questions as well? Can I say something to the, about the police issue? As we're going through these things, this thing is going to, I can already see, it's going to last a long time. Yeah, we're here to And let's, let's just put this to bed about ta the car take-home thing. I think let's just ask, are there any other one of us up here that want to, you're saying go through it line by line. I'm saying let's do it. Let's say, is, is there anybody else up here that's in favor of taking away their cars? I am not. Now, you're talking about car allowance. Their car allowance. Yeah. Well, I was until the chief said that it was actually saving the city money to pay them. I would like to see some proof on yes. that. Well, <clears throat> I, I personally don't think you can just arbitrarily one year say we're going to do away with them. Uh, we can do away with them through attrition, but to come in and, and, and to tell – tell our employees that uh, we're, we're fixing to cut your salary by X number of dollars, uh, I, I, I don't think that's uh, fair and I don't think that's a good thing to do. Now, I'm, you know, if we want to look at it through attrition, then then we can do that. But I, I think that's the only fair and honest way of doing it. And then, I don't, you know, they can still be reimbursed for their mileage so if they're driving right. the miles as the chief says they're driving and he said that if he were turning in a mileage sheet he would actually be getting more money so if it is true that they're driving more miles than what the car allowance pays and they can be reimbursed and there's there's another thing so i'm not I, I don't know that they would be losing salary but why don't we do like marty's saying as and as their jobs come up and we hire new people to replace them just you're basically making them take a decrease in pay and just right here at this meeting. And well, it depends. If the, if the reimbursement is more, more than the car allowance, they would not be taking a decrease. But just like you I said, like the rate hasn't figures. been increasing forever, so they're, I, they're saving us money. So in the long run, I, 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 I bet you if this comes out, they're saving us money. But and not I, seeing the documentation, it's hard to make that decision. I'd me. like to see some figures on that. Yeah. Yeah. We've been but you're, cut, you're wanting to cut this without seeing any documentation. But you're saying you're this is new. And for eight years, I have hammered on this because when I got on council, it was four hundred and forty-four thousand dollars a year. Today, it's a hundred and nine. We have been cutting it through our attrition, but that's how long it's it's taking. And we talk about this every year. Well, I think we have a lot of other issues we need to talk about besides this. We need to get get through all these things, and it's going to take. I respect your is issues, but I would like to have mine respected as well. Thank you. I, I told you my feelings on yours. I don't agree. <laughs> Ricky, go ahead and answer her questions while, while you've got the floor, please. Okay. Sir. Charlotte, would you <coughs> – what I – run that question by me again. How many employees supervisors <coughs> and whatnot uh, cover? Okay. Um, I run the numbers while I was sitting there listening to the chief a little bit. Water Utilities Division has – off the bench reports that I have available, 150 positions, 150 people that I am responsible for. <coughs> the superintendents that you mentioned, um, uh, engineering managers, nine, 
nine positions that's under that gentleman, counting himself. Um, three staff engineers, inspectors, <coughs> uh, engineering coordinator, senior engineer, design tech, <coughs> water production plant, right, skipped one, no. Water production plant, that's Charles McGuire, he's the water treatment superintendent. There's 12 positions over there that run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, so we can treat your water and you'll have acceptable water to drink according to the TCQ rules and regulations. <coughs> the water quality Ricky, lab let, let me, that- in, in the interest of time, since uh, I guess I'm the only one that's interested in it, you don't have any departments where you have a supervisor that there's only two people that do that kind of work and one's your supervisor. No. So you're, what you're telling me is you've got 100 people maybe under one supervisor, 50 people under another, and that's that's what these are. There's the most of the city staff, the, those work in these divisions. Correct. You've answered my question. Johnny, you're going to be next, but I need to stretch my back. Let's take a few minutes. It's 344. Let's reconvene. Let's see, where'd we leave? We left off with Johnny Silvers, Marty, Mr. Fleming, and myself. Go. Okay, Mayor, thank you. Let me just first say that uh, Marty has cookies enough for, uh, for everyone here. So. <laughs> if anybody needs one, holler at <laughs> Uh, and as the meeting goes later, I would just like to say they'll cost more. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess I just wanted to touch base on the uh, on on the salary uh, increase that we're talking about. I'm looking at the position classifications sheet, and now these aren't all the positions, or they are because I'm seeing like grade six. There's one one person at a grade six. No. There's more than one. Well, there's more than that's a that's a title at that grade. There may okay. be multiple people in that in that. Lisa, thank you. Would that's you just the title please? and pay level for that pay grade? Is that correct? Well, as it so happens, the custodian that is the grade six, there is just one of those in the city. But all the rest of the titles have multiple incumbents in those classifications for the most part. I mean, you're only going to have one superintendent one city manager one director but all the rest of them are multiples but if yes. we hit something like a patrolman policeman or mm -hmm. fire there'll be 155 there of might those be multiple right. people in that correct does that answer mm -hmm. yeah and, and really i'm going to keep my comments just real simple because i'm looking at again you know and i like what don is saying and some other folks are saying that we need to certainly a uh, keep and uh, and uh and watch after the folks on the uh, on the bottom end of the totem pole, so to speak. But you know, I'm looking at grades six, seven, eight, and six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You know, my my uh, I guess what I would be interested in doing is if we can bump those grade levels up as far as pay scale. I'm, I'm the ne the next pay grade is twelve. You know, it's at the minimum is twenty three thousand. So. You know, I'm saying that we could. What it would, what would it do to the budget? What would it do to our numbers if we bump those up to all those up to even a twenty thousand uh, dollar minimum grade uh, uh, pay scale? Is what is what I'd be interested in. And then from then then on, if there is any uh, funds left over, then we, we we can you know, I. And I want to be careful what I'm saying because there's been times when I say, and I think uh, uh, a good friend of mine over here to my left is thinking the same thing, but I don't want to leave anybody out because, you know, the, the morale factor sets in. You know, if, if we just bump these, these folks up and leave others out, uh, I, I just don't want to step on any toes because, you know, everybody's trying to do their best job that they can. And well, you know, if you're making a hundred thousand dollars, well, I, I believe you earned it. You know, some, 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 uh, somewhere down the road, you know, you did the right thing. So, uh, I would hate to leave anybody out. If it worked out where we could, I guess, you know, I'm just one vote. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, salaries is my interest in bumping up the folks at the bottom up uh, a good, a good percentage. You know, to okay. you know, help them out is, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know. 
rent increases. I'm not saying they're all renters, but there's a lot of them are. You know, it's going it's going to affect their pocketbook. So, again, these custodians, the 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 cook helpers, the cashiers, the accounting clerks, and the meter technicians, and the list goes on and on. Mm-hmm. That that'd be my interest, Mayor, just to kind of help those folks up a little bit. If I could comment on that. Yes, please. Um, if, if I could call your attention to um, grade 8, and you'll see that there's a meter reader there. If you go to grade 10, you have a meter technician and a meter service representative. Those people supervise the meter readers. If we move all the 6, 7, 8, 9s, and 10s up to 20,000, then you have the supervisors making the same as the people that they're supervising. So you have to be careful, and that's where the compression comes in when you're talking about different grades. Okay. Um, and that I didn't know, but I, I hear what you're certainly. Saying. I mean, so that's why you have to look and see which jobs you'd be moving. But um, it, obviously, I, I don't have a dollar figure today to take all of those grades up to twenty thousand. I've got a flash drive with me that I could compute it pretty quickly. Um, Lisa? But you just have to be careful that you're not okay. mixing the classes together. You developed. Yes. It was at least half a di- dozen different options uh, for different types of pay increases that you circulated earlier. Do you have those with you today? Yes, I do. Okay, Mayor, maybe when we get finished with the rest of council comments, you know, we're starting to see a pattern where we want the heaviest increases to go at the lower end. Maybe after we, maybe we could get her back up here and show us what some of those options are again, refresh our memories. Did you have some options where you emphasized higher pay at at below certain thresholds? Um, Yes, sir, and I had also in that Friday packet, I think, two weeks ago, I provided um, scenarios for under 40,000, under 45,000, under 50,000. I don't have that on the flash drive, but I, yes, that form. If if you all have your hard copies with you, we could go certainly through that. Um, I also did a a short little example to show you the differences with um, whether or not we fund vacancies (coughs) and, and what that does to the ranges. Because we've talked about that where if you um, fund just the positions that have people in them, that does nothing to the ranges to raise the starting salaries. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, I'd be happy to discuss any of that that you want. Because, you know, even the bottom line, it says it right there, we want to attract candidates and retain employees. So we need to do something, you know. And I I believe we've tried our best over the the years. But uh, I think we need to continue (coughs) down that road is it trying to bump up some of these uh, folks' salaries. Mayor, that's all I have. Is that enough? That's Do you enough. want more? Okay. Mr. Seth. Well, I, I would just like to start out by saying I think we've got great staff. Uh, I think we've got great uh, uh, em- employees. I, I think they really strive hard to do a good job for the city, and, and I want to commend them. And, and uh, I guess my, my two things would be, one, Lisa, we were t- we were looking at wages and, and, and salaries with being a three percent, and that was going to r- roughly cost in the neighborhood of about six hundred and forty-seven thousand uh, dollars. Does that include vacancies? Um, and the six hundred thousand dollar number was which one? Was it one of mine or was it one of Morgan's? I'm sorry. The the six thousand the six hundred thousand dollar number was it one of Morgan's or was it one of mine? It's, is it Morgan's uh, number okay, you're talking about? Morgan's six forty-seven. Yeah, so three percent Morgan's. Uh, that does not include vacancies. Do, do 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 we have a number for for vacancies? Yes, sir. That's my number. Um, hold on, and I'm I'm calling it up if you don't mind. Just oh, a second okay. here. I'm sorry. Lisa, do you want me to send somebody to make some copies of these? I beg your pardon? Do you want me to send somebody to make copies of these? No, I think everybody has them. Do I they all have them? I don't. Oh, you didn't bring yours? No. I had them at one time. Thank you. Rick. Lots of copies, Rick. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor, while they're doing that, do we have a – do we want to set a time for us to get out of here? I mean, I don't want to be here all night. I'm going to tell you what. If, if anybody gets ready to make a motion to adjourn, you got my second. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess. I'm. I, I think we have to. I think we have to look at vacancies. I, if we don't, then then 
uh, we're doing what we need to do to retain employees, but we're not doing what what we need to do to 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 hire new employees. Uh, so I, I think we need to, to to look at the possibility of of, of uh, moving vacancies, moving everything up at, at, okay. at one time. Uh, that w that would be uh, one of my uh, I guess one of my items to to look at if if, if we're going to give. We're going to give salary increases to employees, and I, and I think I think they deserve it. I think they do a good job. I do think they have uh, they they're they're confronted with what uh, Winky said a while ago. You know, property values have increased, whether they're renting or whether they're buying their own home. Uh, they're they're faced with the same thing we're all faced with is in, increased uh, in, 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 increased bills. So. I think that's real important, and um, really, I, I that I'll cut mine short too, so uh, we well, can go on. Enlighten us, Mr. Fleming. Okay. Um, can you come back up here and put in the numbers of on the overall budget, and let's let's play with something here. I love Winky's deal, the the spreadsheet on Winky's thing, and I want to get I want to do the general budget first, the, and then we want to go to these secondary budgets. I think real quick, because Winky's, I totally agree with Winky's on on Winky on this uh, workers' comp incentive thing. I think we need to get rid of it. It's a that's a lot of money that's going. What I, the way I see it is I I agree with everybody. I think we're all not all, but a lot of us are in the same agreement with raising the lower paid workers rates a little bit higher than the than the upper end we need to make sure that we don't cause more of a compression issue when i'm plugging in the numbers and i'm i'm a numbers guy so i'm always i'm always <laughs> marty's over here will probably watching me the whole time writing out numbers the whole time it this hurts. is this is what i would like to come up with and i think that winky and charlotte might like this also because i think this would be a good compromise for everybody i would like to offer a 3.5 percent pay rate can you this is the number I came up with, 766,422. Okay. Uh, lower the taxes a full 1%. So go ahead and do the, go ahead and lower the taxes the 1% that Charlotte was asking for, which is 370,000. Rodney, can I clarify, please? We've heard percent. Typically, we've expressed that as cents, not percent. One cent. One cent. I'm sorry. I did say that wrong. One cent. One cent, which is 370000 roughly. And then the remainder of what we had on that board was 172000 I think, $213 in order to get to that 1.308635. If you back out, we had added raises to address fire compression earlier, if I yeah, take that out. I would have raised that to the 172213. Right. So I have a contingency of 172,213. And that, that gets us where we're at on the money. That On the general fund, I kind of think if we do all those things and then we can talk about taking some items out still if there are, if there are enough people to vote on that or go over that. Winky, would you be happy with that, with lowering the one cent on the taxes? The reason why I'm saying, Winky, instead of 2% on the pay raises and going to 3.5%, 3 this is – to me, it's a very big deal, and I know that you probably know this issue more than anybody. The, the rental rates in this city have gone up between 10 and 15 percent just in the last six months. Just in the last six months, they've gone up 10 to 15 percent. If we're offering a lot of these lower paid workers three and a half percent, I personally, I would like to do a lot more, but I'm trying to compromise here and make it happy for everybody. I think that Winky and Charlotte, they've persuaded me that on this one percent go or one cent uh, lowering tax value values I think that that's a good deal because we did make that commitment as a city 10 years ago and we are I know I hear it all the time we are one of the highest cities in the whole state so I think if we do continue on that track and we lower it to one cent I think that we can give three and a half percent to our workers they deserve much much more than that and then uh, the firemen issue I know that they want 244,000 Next year, hopefully, we can come back and we can give them a little extra next year and try to fix that problem. I talked to Michael and Rick on this on the Columbaria, and they're telling me we can do the Columbaria out of the other fund, and it can be done. And I want to make sure that we're right here in front of everybody. We're saying we're going to do that. Three hundred the the three hundred sixteen thousand 
of that part would come out of the other fund. It wouldn't come out of this fund. Is that correct? If that's what if that's what you direct, that's what we'll do. Yeah, I'm not. Y'all need to discuss this if you're if you if you would be up for this. Uh, let me hear your thoughts. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to steamroll everybody on this. I'm trying. In raises to address fire compression, is that the 171 that's down in contingency? Yeah, yes. If, okay, because. Well, it just no, no, no the no. no no it's already there. Change the title from contingencies to fire compression. Let yeah just yeah right let's there. put in the first years. There you go. There you go. Okay, there it is. Well, you you can do it in in two steps and have yeah. one hundred and twenty two thousand this year. Right. But I think that if we're looking at the big picture on this thing, we have one point three million, and we can debate. The scariest part about all this is 1.3 million is a drop in the bucket of, bucket of about what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We need to just look at the big picture of this thing, move on. We need to get to these things that, to me, bother me. Winky's deal on this workers' compensation incentive, I would like to get rid of that. So, but we gotta we gotta focus on getting this general fund done, and then move on to the other funds and see if we can slash the things he's talking about. That's m that's my opinion. Rodney, let me ask you uh, on that 3.5 percent again. Is that across the board, or wh how is that? Well, I think we all, most of us have talked about that, and I, I don't want to do a 3.5% across the board. I would like if you're, I'd like to, us to set a, uh, a, a cutoff here of some sort, and I think that uh, we would need to talk with everybody and see if maybe if you're making more than 50000 you get a 1% raise. If you're making lower than that, you get a 5% raise or something like that. You know, I, 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 that's off the top of my head, and I'm just spitballing on that. Right. But, of course, the lower-end people are the ones that are having the hardest problems with the rent and with everything the, in the city. Everything is going up, and that's the ones we really want to concentrate I believe we really want to concentrate on. I'm with you. Well, I, I would still like to uh, stick the 54000 in there somewhere uh, that I discussed, too, with, with the clerks uh, and, you know, see what we can come up with something for the dispatchers because of the amount of turnover that we have in those positions and I think that that would solve lots of problems in both those. But that can be worked out in that 3.5, can it? Yeah, you can be reduced, reduced it to uh, 700,000, I guess, round figures. Right. Mm -hmm. Morgan, would you please change that 171 to half of the 240? What did we say? The yeah, we said 125, basically. Yes. Now that leaves you with a little bit of, wi it, thank you, well put. Now there's 46 that has not been allocated, and we can talk about all the other things that, uh, that, I would that be need money. But I'm not fine what, with What's the, the bottom line there, Morgan? It is zero. It's not zero. Yes, You're it's balanced. an exact it balanced budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But Revenues you've got 46 there that's in contingencies. And uh, realistically, Let's, let's talk about where we are so far. We're close to talking about some other things that we can make a decision on. Mm -hmm. If this is something that council can vote on, we can take this and run with it, and we can decide how to allocate the, the – we've got a block of money here, 766000 We can talk about how to allocate that and firm that up. That is a, a concern because HR has lots of work to do to try to uh, allocate that uh, and – uh, prep us for October 1. Why, why don't we just round that off to 800, it'd be 812,000 roughly, but uh, put your contingency fund in there and then we can include the, my proposal in there and then let you and HR and yeah. everybody work out how it actually works on paper. Well, how, well how's that, well, how would that leave us on a contingency? Would that would leave, leave nothing for a contingency. Zero? Yeah. yeah. I, I, well, well, you what, what's the, the normal custom and practice? So you, you never end up with a zero. Well, we d this, this is, is just, just one current point. revenues and expenditures. We do have a uh, general fund fund balance that we think of in terms of contingency money. So uh, we shoot for a balanced budget, this or better. Uh, and. Mm -hmm. The challenge is uh, if you budget a net profit, you're collecting more than you're actually using, and if you don't have a specific objective for that in mind, that becomes a difficult issue politically. So, I think I think this is a fair deal. I mean, everybody's kind of getting what they want. I do agree with Charlotte on on one thing. Next year, 
we got to start early and we need to to be in on those meetings and seeing the little things being done but this year we're kind of in a time crunch I think this would solve a lot of our problems. It's not going to solve them, but it's going to help some of our problems. Next year, what we need to do is, as a council, we need to be in on a few more of those things. And I think maybe it will answer a few more questions. And, and I do like it where we are all together in on those because Charlotte was right on us feeding off each other on what should and what should not be done. When we get up here, a lot – we have no idea. I have no idea what she's thinking. I have no idea what Winky's thinking. Every one of us has a different thought process of what they're what they're wanting. But I think for this year, this would we could get this done and move on to this. We need to go to the next fund that we need to talk about that we do need to do some cuts on. Well, let me have my say so everybody okay. else is Sorry. everybody else has been able to talk. And I do agree with Don. I agree with Don. We've got to bring our bottoms up. We have got to bring our workers up. We've got to bring our CDLs up. We've got to bring our dispatchers up. We've got to bring those on the bottom up. The CDLs, the municipal court, the dispatchers, I think every one of these need to be brought up. Uh, and I like 45000 as a as a starting point. Now, we were talking at 4%. A 4% was almost $886,000. Okay, you've got 812 and 125 plugged in right there. I like the 125 to address the compression, but I'd stop with about 880. That 4%, that's 886 thousand dollars. Let's use that 886 thousand as a figure, and then work from that. Uh, I do not like percentage increases because those that's making 50 thousand dollars gets 3 percent. Those that make 16 thousand get 3 percent, and there's no way that that'll ever work. And we have got to bring our bottom workers up. As far as the 1% sales tax, we have reduced it 10% since 06. We have followed the commitment that we made. I would like to see a rainy day fund, and I'm going to continue to preach to that. Uh, we had some extra in our, from our increases on property taxes. We've got 370 for 1%. I would like to put a rainy day fund together. I would like to, to, and maybe next year to start this, any increases in property taxes goes into a savings account, goes into a rainy day fund, so that we are building up some contingencies because when this oil field bus comes, we're going to be stuck with a lot of problems and no money to take care of it. I really would like to see a rainy day fund, and I think this 1% sales tax would be a very good place to start. That's $370,000. Let's put it into a savings account. Uh, the car allowances, I think this is something that we're already taking care of. This is going to work itself out. And if, it, if, if it's cheaper than reimbursement, then we probably need to stay where we are. As far as these pilot funds on wastewater, we need an ordinance, and we need it in a very close meeting so that we can get this taken care of because the intent of the council was to do away with pilots. We dealt with this in 06. We were talking specifically about water increases. So, but we were talking about pilot funds, period, in everything. And if we just did it in water and we didn't do it in wastewater, we need an ordinance and we need it now because these pilot, pilot funds need to end. They are not good for us. Uh, I do want to see Fairmount Cemetery. I want to see them financed whether we do it out of our capital funds or whether we do it out of our, our general fund, it makes no difference. But that, that is money that will, that will increase, that will take care of itself. These are funds that will pay themselves back. So we need to, we need to get the columbarium funds in this budget one way or another. And we do it like Rodney said with capital or we can do it in general funds. I don't see it makes any difference. We just need to get them in there. But we have got to increase the wages on our people, our CDL drivers, and our dispatchers. That's got to happen. We're going, or we're, we're going to have supervisors out hooking up water if we don't get something done quickly because they're leaving us. So there's mine. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, one point of clarification and question. Uh, these increases, whatever they ultimately end up being. Excuse me. These uh, raises and increases for the employees, whatever they end up being, uh, shouldn't there be a proviso in there that if you haven't been uh, in the employ of the city for more than a year or if you just raised if you just uh, got an increase uh, in your salary as a, as, as a result of changing positions or 
are moving up, it seems to me like those would need to be exempted because like if you just worked one day, hypothetically, uh, would you be entitled to the raise? Yes. I would say so because these people are having to buy the same groceries that everyone else buys. The expenses are there. The rent is there. The gasoline is there. The groceries are there. The utilities are there. Yes, they're having to pay this. I think it is an embarrassment that we have people working for our city that are not even making a living wage. And I, I fought this well, for years. Uh, of course, I'm referring more to the top end. Uh, top end, I, I think I said forty-five thousand dollars. Don said forty or fifty. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. Those that are under that threshold, we need to use the eight hundred and eighty-six thousand dollars to bring them up. Those that are over that threshold, forty-five would work. Fifty would work. Those that are over that threshold, they're able to they're able to successfully live. Those that are below that threshold are suffering. Fair enough. Mayor, can I uh, get a better understanding? A couple of things. <clears throat> uh, it looks, like, it sounds like what you suggested is substantially what's on the screen with the, with two exceptions. One is the tax rate. You're saying leave the tax rate as it is, but capture the 370 and start a rainy day fund. That's what I'd do. I'd put some money back. If we don't put some money back, we're going to get caught in a bind. Okay, uh, I'll come back to that in just a minute. And the other is you said 885 or 886,000 for raises. 4% was 885,826. So but I just said $886,000. That's 4%. That was Morgan's number? That was Morgan's number. Yes. Okay. Um, then that number probably doesn't include funding the vacant positions. Right, it only addresses current staff, but it's it's just a placeholder figure that could be used for anything that's the council's pleasure. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out as a figure to work with. Morgan, whether we give the 370 back in a tax rate reduction or we capture it for a rainy day fund, it needs to be in there. So would you put it back in, please? All right. Now, what that does is you'll see that contingencies line it says 72,000. That is, these are all reductions. So when without those brackets, that means we're over budget. 72,000. If she zeroed that out, we our total down at the bottom would be we'd be uh, out of balance 72,000. That's the difference between the 885 and the 86 812 or 816 that was in there before. And so now the 766 is what I had it at. Well, it was 7 something plus Don Don's oh, yeah, he added in. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So 812. Now uh Mayor, if we leave the 885 in, we're, we're a little over. We're a little overspent there. Uh, if we leave the 812 and the 370, then we're balanced. Now, that is approximately seven thousand, seventy thousand dollars that yeah. that won't go for raises or something else. But if with the 812 in there, Mayor, you, you're the only difference that remains in the proposal is you want to capture the 370 for future issues yes sir and others have talked about uh, reducing the property tax rate by 370 and and just like just like has been said i'm only one vote but i would vote to put it in a savings account but if we've got four people to vote to spend it we'll spend it but i i just don't like to spend every dime that we have i want i want some savings there ma'am yes ma'am I hear what you say and I have always agreed with you about the rainy day fund or savings or whatever you wanted to call it, but by taking away from the citizens who work and live here, who scream about their property taxes and as high as it is, it's the continued goal to reduce that rate and for us to do with less. And I want to go on record as saying is I don't have a problem with the employees at all. There's, the city has got some fabulous employees. But what I'm saying is you need to realize you work for the people and the people have to be considered. And to me, giving the employees that kind of increase and taking away their property tax rate slaps our citizens right in the face, to me. That's Understood. I can accept that. I see what you're saying. But you also said a while ago that if we run out of water, we're gonna have to go we buy water. Have to and buy we're water. going, we're, then it takes X amount of money to run our city. And if we don't have it, we're going to have to borrow it. So if we've got money in a rainy day fund, a contingency fund, if we plan for things, then we've got the money when we do need it. We don't have to raise taxes or raise permit fees because we've got money that we have put back to prepare ourselves for, for things that we 
do not know this is going to happen. So, could you Mayor. take two hundred thousand yes. out of your raises? And, no, you I, and the I employees won't. still get the money. I mean, I thought that the her recommended was six hundred. Or did I misunderstand no, that? I like the four okay. percent. Okay, fine. What about if? What about you just split the difference on the lower tax rate? Just we'll. Go with the do a cent. half half cent and do the rest for rainy day. I don't. I wouldn't have a problem. I can negotiate there. Yeah. yeah. Just, but I just, let's just try want, to work. It I out. want to put some money back, and you know that maybe we have taken half cent reduction since those six. Yeah. I mean, it's it's maybe better than nothing, Charlotte. I mean, everybody. And yeah. next year, hopefully, we're getting more on taxes, so we can increase. We because Dwayne's right. We do need to. I'm really scared, and Charlotte's right about the water situation. It, what are we going to do in the future when we don't? And it's probably going to be millions of dollars We're then. Definitely going to have to have water, money to pay for the water. Yes, Johnny. No, I was going to say I totally agree with you and, and now Rodney on that <coughs> 370 because it doesn't matter what bucket we put it in. You know, we own those buckets. You know, we as citizens own those buckets. So if you want to call it a rainy day fund or a savings account or whatever you want to call it, it's still there money for us to use at a later date if we had to. So. But I, I don't have a problem with halving it I, I don't and go with a half cent reduction and a half cent in a rainy day fund. At least I'll get a fund I've been asking for for the last 10 years started it, started, and then next year I would like to put in an ordinance. Every, if, if we've got our property appraisal at X, every, in, every dollar increase over X goes into that rainy day fund. That way we will have a, 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 a a source from which we can continue to build our rainy day fund. So I don't have a problem with going a half cent. If we can negotiate that down, I can work with that. I'm good. Mayor, if yes, I could, sir. the money you set aside in the rainy day fund, at, at some point we'll be coming back to council and talking about big capital issues mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, police station has come up, streets continually comes up, storm water continually comes up. And uh, the one thing about putting money in a rainy day fund is that it's there for a rainy day, but it, it is also there for uh, streets or other capital issues if council decides that those are priorities. And wouldn't it be so, great to have a big, large amount of money so that if we did need an extra million to do something, it would be there? Yes. We, if we put it in, we can take it out, a majority right. vote. But if it's, ne if it's never put there in the first place, there's no money to take out. I'd like to get it started. If we start it with $185,000, that's, that's more we have in savings than we had yesterday. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I think here again next year, it's water under the bridge now, but we need to, to start earlier on this to where we know all the idiosyncrasies of this thing so that we can have it worked out by the time we're under the gun to approve this thing and go line by line and see what we can do to, to get her done. I, I agree with you 100%. Mayor, I think as in Daniel's absence, he's talked about that some with staff over the last few weeks. Um, so I think his intention is to get that started quick after this is over with. So we'll Poss reiterate that. Possibly a good day to start working on next year's budget would be October the 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> and Don, you know, to add what you're saying, that's a good idea. I've been here five years and we're always we always right end up gun. just like this. We always end up like we said. We need to start early next year. We're here. Here we are again, five years later. But at least so. we had more than two workshops in the past. That's well, all we've had. Well, there were plenty year. of opportunities this year. There's just other items pushed it out. Why don't we just set a, the agenda and have workshops between, like we were doing these Tuesdays between the Tuesdays? I don't do see it like it. for three months beforehand. We don't to. see a We'd problem with to. that at all. I think that's an excellent idea. Does someone want to make a motion to approve this? Can we approve well, this? Well, we absolutely. can approve it in theory, can't we? A absolutely. This is this directs staff for how you want the money spent. It directs yep. us for uh, preparation of the uh, um, tax levy ordinance. This is absolutely exactly what we're okay. looking for. And it doesn't, it doesn't hold any. It's it's we're not putting it in concrete. It can still be changed at our next meeting, but it gives staff some numbers to work with. I move that we give this as direction towards what we are trying to achieve. Excuse me, this is a work session for discussion. That's why I was only. asking if can oh, we do that. So we Thank cannot. You. No, this not is even direct theory. staff. Then. That's right. We, we hear that. We hear your direction. We will bring. Uh, we will follow up in accordance with That's this. My okay. mistake. Forgive my, me, please. Mine also. As Thank a you. consensus, is this something that we can work with with staff? As a consensus. Rodney, pull your motion, okay. and I won't make. I'll pull second. the motion. I won't make my second. 
I I I unmove it. And I didn't say anything about making motions or moving anything, but we do have a consensus that this will be something for staff to work with to bring something back at next meeting so that we can move to approve. Okay. Yeah, but now let's let's go real quickly on to the – what Winky was talking about. Let's go to that fund, the Wait first fund. What, what, Wait a minute. What is the salary deal? Right. Can we clarify we, the microphone? That, can't hear. I would suggest 45000 Everything under forty five needs to be raised so that these people, so that our employees are have a living wage to live with. And what are we doing with over 45000 Well, over $45,000, they are not going to get much, right. if any. We need... We, our, our over 45 workers are able to, they're able to successfully live. Now they may not live high, but they can, they can survive. Those that's making under $45,000 are not even able to live. So that's the ones that I would say focus on. And that's, again, that's, that's up to the rest of y'all. That's just my opinion. I agree with that. And, and my I other don't. question would be, do you wanna tie this to performance? Oh, meets yes. expectation exceeds expectations that's council question don what you think when i was a being appraised and appraising i hated the meets and and exceeds i mean there's such a thin line between those two and you know even though it's it's not spoken i always felt like you know you need to be really careful because you'll over exceed and everybody for the most part that's managing people thinks that their employees are doing good jobs so you know to me i, I think it's a, it needs to be a pass or fail but but that's just me and the way i look at it marty what's your feelings on this sir well i i don't think we should uh, cut out uh, the people over 45 now you know to say they're going to get a four percent, or if, if that's what y'all want to base it on, you know, possibly not. But but to to say you know we're, we're going to forget those guys isn't right. They they work just as hard as the ones um, that are under forty five, and and I still think you have to address vacancies. You know, if if you don't address vacancies, then you're where, where do you get new new hires from? So that that's my two points on the deal. Well, don't don't you have rollback whenever if if a position is left open, that salary goes back into the into a fund. In other words, if you've got a forty thousand sour dollar salary that's open for a year, that forty thousand dollars is not used, and so it goes into a contingency or it just it it's not expended and so it falls to net income in the statements and that closes or falls to fund balance yeah so the money's still there it's just but we don't make it available in the next year unless there's some initiative that drives that money to be pulled out of fund balance okay yes ma'am at a later date not today but i would like to discuss how our hiring is done and the process because i've held, had so many complaints about people who apply three four and five times with the city before they even get an interview and i just would like to sit down and be able to talk about that process i do think at least while you're up here we do need that we did got some questions answered we need answered sounds like uh, we have one council member saying we do need to address vacancies. Uh, is that a consistent feeling across okay. council that yes, vacancies should all vacancy. adjust the pay plans? You I got think we've got that. Got a consensus okay, there. and as I understand it, the 812 953 number does include vacancies. Does, does. include. We'll need it to. It, okay. it has to accommodate also. Absolutely. Oh. Rodney, do you have another comment, sir? Well, I think I said this earlier, and I agree with Marty on this. You know, the kind of way I see it, I wasn't saying cut out the people above 45000 I was saying more like they get a 1%, the lower people get the other 3% it divided amongst them. So that's kind of the way I was seeing it. I see, you know, in the past, everybody looks forward to, to some kind of raise. So I think everybody does deserve some kind of raise because, like I said, the cost of living has gone up 
10 to 15 percent or more in the last six months here and that hasn't just gone up for the lower end people it has gone up for the upper end people also so i think we should come up with some kind of formula where it's you know i, well, I definitely don't think they should get four percent well one of, one of the things like Dwayne mentioned a while ago to me is if you if you put a percent in it then you know the the more you make the more you get um what i would suggest is let lisa work on it and come back with a recommendation for a set amount three hundred dollars five hundred dollars something like that for for the higher paid and then maybe a percentage for the lower that's and great. i don't i don't have a problem with that that's a great idea it's I just if we do not build our bottom our bottoms the bottom people up we're going to lose them yeah okay uh, if i, I could a, just and <laughs> i'm sorry i've got i've just a lot of questions um all right so you want to address vacancies we don't we have vacancies that are in the positions that are over fifty thousand so what do we do with those jobs you know if if we're going to raise the ranges I mean, I mean i just need to understand we're talking funding all vacancies no matter what grade they are so that that means those ranges if they go up they're going to go up for the new people too johnny morgan maybe you can help out but somebody please tell me again i know we lowered the tax rate by half a cent with 185 i see that the split there the contingency amount tell me again what that is rainy day rainy day what what happens if we raise on the the raises for employees if we go up to a five percent uh, and take away from some of that contingency fund I, i'm just throwing this out okay move it up to five and give a and a million dollars is it five percent eleven twenty five from eight eighty five 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 percent on raises for forty five thousand dollars a year is that eight seventy eight okay but i'm not saying i'm not saying uh five percent across the board what i'm saying is maybe i'm even willing to bump it up to say like fifty thousand as a threshold giving those folks fifty and below a three percent and maybe everybody above a two percent i mean i'm i'm still uh in the mindset of hey just because uh i'll throw somebody out there ricky dixon makes the money he makes i mean i still want to pat him on the back for the job he's doing you know i just don't want to leave I, i'm with i don't want to leave it, you know people out you know i i think they work hard or I, I would hope they do and i think they're doing a good job i just don't want to leave some folks out Please. if if the, the if we can tweak that if that works a three and a two I mean, I'm what? What if we take of the eight hundred and twelve? What if we take five hundred? What if we take five hundred thousand of that and uh, devote that to the lower, below fifty, and we take the rest? Is there something we could use as a threshold there? Because well, it looks like we almost have a consensus that well, we're not going to put a well, limit can, on. Can I say one thing, right quick? Yes, sir. I, I think, based on what, what was said earlier, uh, staff is very creative. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and Lisa. I have all the faith in the world that, that you can bring us something back uh, based upon that 812 that will include vacancies, will include some kind of percentage for something 45 and under, and then possibly, like Don said, a set number, a set amount for, for the people over 45, and, and why don't you use your creativity and come to us, and then we'll give you some direction if we don't like it. Very good. That was very what I, that was my suggestion. I was very going to make. Well, very you know, well if, see it. Counsel. If you can just give us that you want to do something for over and something for under, we can master that and come up with what that should good be. Enough. Well, I will agree with that one. Yes. Hey, Mayor, we need, do need some more detail, and that was the detail in Don's part of the proposal. Don, can you remind us what positions? What is well, and we need to confirm that that's still part of this proposal. Well, what? what I was looking at is we were at about $54,000 and that's why we uh, talked about putting the contingency yeah. in there. That's for the the non-certified peace officers, uh, non-civil service peace officers, but are certified, non-civil service, but are certified, being brought up along with, with the clerks at municipal court and the dispatchers. Um, now, here again, if we if we need to take baby steps just to to get it started where it'll help maybe keep some of them that's fine um but 
we only have so much money and and i don't want to take from that but by the same token i just think that if we stick some more uh pay in there that will help retain some of those employees should we leave do you want specific uh, you want a specific effort in that direction or do you want to leave some discretion for lisa to bring back she talked about possibly some of those jobs needed to be reclassified they do and and i've already looked at them and they do so So do you want to handle it that way or do you want specific actions no no that's fine however so again lisa's discretion on that right work out between lisa and the judge and 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 the thing with that michael is that um the funding for those changes would still need to we'd have to have it so we would take it out of exactly that's why i was concerned i wanted to yeah i'm happy with this and and I'm sorry, John, not to beat a horse, but um, the meets and exceeds, we, uh, do we have consensus that we want this to be performance-based? I heard one say no. He I, don't really, really like I okay. don't really like it. Well, okay. just across the board. To, to me, performance, yes, I think they need to be evaluated, but I don't think that there needs to be uh, a meets, exceeds, or unsatisfactory. I think either it's unsatisfactory or you, you get the raise. It's so much easier that way. And I think if we'll get these wages up where that people can make a living, we're going we're gonna to solve a whole lot of these problems with meets and exceeds and do not. Because if it's a job that people can make a living with, they're going to try and keep the job. So I don't, I don't know. If we'll get those wages up, I think a lot of these problems will take care of themselves. That's, you know, that may be just be me. But. So is it across the board or is it performance-based? I'd say across the board. Across the board. There's your consensus right Thank there. Thank you. Thank you. Across you got board. four. But Morgan. Bottoms up. Morgan. You guys are getting close. We're, we're, I think we're ready to move on, possibly. But that that percentage ends up being three and a half, doesn't it? Not four. No, it's four. It's four. It's four. Well, it is going to. It, it's not going to be either it's because you're bringing up the bottom and having a set yeah, it's, amount at the well, top. I know, but there's not four percent in there, is there? I don't think so. I it, think it. I, I think it it's three gonna, and a half plus the fifty-four thousand, wasn't it? I think plus so. Plus one twenty-five for fire, so it's a, a variable amount. Yeah. Pardon me. Be a little more than four than one. No, the, the, the it depends the, on. Yeah, where that's you right. Stop. The fire was two. The fire is separate. That's right. And it, we it. in the in the PowerPoint we presented earlier, fire was not separate, and so these are numbers that are parked in this way, and, and will be varied for under forty five, separate for fire, separate for vacancies. Um, It'll work. Out. The the freedom to to make those those impacts in that way. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Mayor, I, I know that you didn't mean to insult your right over here, but you know when you say you 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 me, that's my four. Don't need to go any further. It's totally not giving a voice to to I, I, this I was end. looking at Don when I got my first one and I didn't see any I didn't see any motions from there I was so I went to that side I looked at Don first he was my first so if you've got okay. something to say you need to say it not just sit there because I'm going somewhere I'm going for I'm going for four votes or a consensus of four so yeah I looked at you first let's move on mayor Yes, uh, we've had uh, one council member, Mr. Wardlaw, bring up some specific items. I think as staff, we'd like clarity on how to move forward on those, specifically the workers' comp incentive plan. Um, uh, I'll give you some options there in, uh, in the interest of time. We can try to work that out today. Uh, we can bring that back at a future date with it in the budget. With a, or we can bring it or we can move ahead and bring it back at a future day without that authorization. Uh, do you uh, so there's three options again uh, discuss it today move ahead without it move ahead with it and bring it back I don't want it in the budget that's my that's my opinion that's my vote because that's in a separate fund it doesn't affect the, the spreadsheet we just worked right. on but it's still okay it with it. is something we need direction from council yeah, I'm on. okay I'm okay with it could I just make one comment on that? I beg your pardon. The um, just so that you know, we did zero our balance, uh, our balance budget, and so in order to pay that two hundred fifty thousand to the safety incentive plan, we took it out of our claims, and we're crossing our fingers. So, are you suggesting that that goes back into claims, or does it go away from the budget altogether? 
uh, from a financial management standpoint, I'd say we can uh, I think it needs we to can do it either way. Uh, Probably go back into claims. claims. Because then if it's not used, it goes back into fund balance. That's, that's, that's right. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't gone, gone. Thank you. And we can bring that topic back for a deeper discussion if council would like. But some direction today we, we would appreciate. All right. I, I think do Satisfied? away with it. Yeah. Put it back Satisfied? in place. Satisfied? Motion to adjourn. Taking it out, right? Taking it out. We're Is that what we're out. hearing? All right. The next thing uh, Mr. Wardlaw mentioned, cell phone increases. Um, that's a lot of information. Would you like a review of cell phone activity? Uh, what numbers of phones exist and what we see happening in rates? Would you like to make a decision today or, or postpone that decision and have a discussion later on? We can gather more information, but I think some of us think there's too much expenditure on cell phones and too many people have them, so, but I, I'm willing, I'm open-minded to looking at additional information. How about, why don't I propose then, and uh, I'm going to need staff to speak up if you see a problem with this, why don't we impose some kind of a freeze on the number of cell phones which exist or number of positions which are authorized to cell phones at this point pending a future council discussion of the matter? What does council think about I'm that? No, that's good. That's good. All right. That's a big jump, though, in one year, 63000 That's yeah. unbelievable. I would, be, I would be looking for another company if it was my own plan. Well, that's one of the reasons I'd like to look into it. I'd, yeah. I'd like to look oh, into it further. So I agree with Winky on that one. I, I as well. We agree on, we in agreement on we, that? Yes. All right. Um, the next uh, CVB increase, and actually CVB increase and Arts Council increase are both items related to occupancy tax. They both have contracts, and uh, I believe we've budgeted the amounts uh, in those contracts. Is that right, Morgan? Correct. Can we authorize those to be as is, however, direct uh, staff to bring back a discussion of that occupancy tax distribution methodology? Well, we've already dealt with this. No. We dealt with this several months ago maybe if we need to deal with it again I guess we can but the reason we went to these figures is to get away from a percentage base and this seemed to be a better setup so you know if we want to come back with it well I, I agree with you this is uh, just because we're receiving more doesn't mean you want to increase right. the spending that's that exactly it need to be held in reserves yeah. and that's the reason we did what that's we why did. we did it for clarity's sake I want to point out that one of the contracts the CVB contract is for an amount certain the arts portion is still a percentage. No, we, well, we need to get rid of yeah. that. It needs to be well, all the same. Um, let's, bring, let's bring that one back. Let's, as staff, we'll take direction yeah. to bring that back for discussion. Uh, we'll uh, present what the existing contract is, what the existing terms are, and get council's yeah. uh, direction on what, they're, what they would have staff do from that standpoint. Because yeah. this does not affect our budget. Yeah, but... but <laughs> Uh, the reason it needs to be at attended to is because it, it's created a 100% a, a increase in uh, uh, what's budgeted for them, and that, that can't be correct. Is, do you have the Arts Council as a separate line? Correct. It's here. Arts Council proposed budget for fiscal year 14, $137,000, uh, which should be 5% of $1.75 million. Which and is what did they actually receive last year? In fiscal year 12, they received 106000 okay. which was 5% of the receipts for fiscal year 12. We, we have a contract with them that suggests a percentage amount. If we bring that back in, uh, within a few months for discussion, that will give us some time to make some adjustment. Would that be satisfactory to Council? Before the end of the calendar year, is that a, is that a timeline that is sufficiently swift to... Uh, Satisfy council? Satisfies me to satisfy you, Mr. Wardlaw? Yes, sir, as long as we don't forget it. My memory's pretty short these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I've got a couple I think of folks remember. <laughs> writing it down. So we'll be talking about occupancy tax anyway as we talk about the excess that has been accumulated in the Civic Events Fund. All, All right. right down here on the left end? All right on the right end? Okay. Mayor, we <laughs> have gotten direction from council on the general fund. We've covered some specific items that were brought up by Council. I'm not aware of other specific items. 
we could talk about other funds uh, today or another day as you deem appropriate. I've already said I'll second a motion, so it's up to y'all. If you want to go, if you want to stay. What time is it? Uh, 435. I'm. I'm I'm in favor of adjourning. I do want to talk uh, about uh, the COSA DC budget and uh, the storm and flood water budget, but I'm prepared to do that at a later date in an expeditious and quick manner. Can we set up a meeting, another budget meeting, and do this besides the city council meeting? Because we all know how packed those have been. I'm not for more meetings, but I think that these this works out good if we do these in little chunks, little bites at a time. Well, Absol absolutely, we can set up. Well, I, I'd like to do that. Well, I hear what y'all are saying. Uh, uh, 29th or the 30th. Do we, uh, do we know what the next agenda is looking like? There may not be much on it. I don't know. I have about 18 items right now. And I still have one or two that I'm going to put on. I still have two. So that's 4 o'clock then. Let me ask you or point out that at the next council meeting, we'll have the second reading of the budget ordinance. We'll pass the budget as, as amended in today's action at that time. Um, we, what we'll be working with, let's say we get into one of these areas and we decide that we need a change in scope for that operation, we'll be amending that budget at some future date. And so uh, it'll be difficult to hurry up enough to get any potential changes into the original budget. We'd be talking about amending the budget anyway, so uh, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be next time because we're going to be, it's an amendment style discussion. Uh, mm, so I'd much rather take it head on, get it out of the way I, myself. Just try to have a short meeting lasting no more than two hours or so and try to run through some of these. much as I hate to say that. We could not have the meeting this week because we've already run into our 72-hour notice, so it would have to be Monday if we posted the meeting. Labor Day. See, yeah, you're not doing Monday. Yeah. Add it to, let's just add it to the agenda. What's another 6 o'clock meeting? That's okay. Keep you out of the bars. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, it won't. Mr. Wardlock, can you remind us of those two areas? Stormwater Fund, I remember. What was the other one? Coast of DC. Coast of DC. Budget. We'll we'll uh, we'll queue up some slides associated with those functions. Very good. Did I hear you? Did I hear? I'll you make a uh, move <laughs> to yeah. adjourn. I'll well, second I'll, that. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? This meeting is over. <laughs>